In this video we will uh, see how to design a hash map and we will see its implementation in C++, Python and Java and we will see a simpler implementation but we will discuss some of the more uh, advanced concepts as well. So first of all what is a hash map? So a hash map implements a abstract data type called associative arrays. So associative here means that uh, there is a notion of key and value. So there are different keys, let's say k1, it's associated with a value v1. It can be a primitive type like int string or it can be a complex object. For example, a class denoting employee. So there will be multiple instances of employee and those objects can act as values. And we can also define keys in different ways so these implement associative arrays. Now in this question we are asked to design a hash map. So uh, the key idea behind hash map is that uh, first of all you can uh, store everything in array also. So why do we need hash map? So if you store it in array, storing is pretty simple. You put a new data in the end. But when you are searching for a data or you are deleting a data, then you have to scan this entire array. So this can take O of n time, linear search. So the idea behind uh, hash map is to reduce this timing to O of 1. Although this is not always possible, but for the ideal hash map, for the ideal hash function, this would be constant type. And for most uh, many of the good hash functions, uh, these are practically not exactly O1, but close to O1. So uh, again, uh, the data, the keys that you have, you may not be given in the form of integers or numbers. There may be complex data types. So there are different steps of uh, using a hash map, implementing a hash map. First is that you have to convert the keys to numbers. The keys may already be numbers. So for example, let's say uh, you are storing data of employee of a company. So each employee has an employee ID so that employee ID can act as a key because you can uniquely identify an employee with a given employee ID no two employees will have the same employee ID so in this case we already had a number this may or may not be number this can be alphanumeric also so here uh, first step is to convert this to a number then we have to map this number to certain indices so we do not have infinite space we have to map them shrink that number to a range numbers can be very large maybe 10 digits long 20 digits long but storage is limited so these two steps are required so in this problem we will not uh, worry about this step so we will assume that keys are given as integers and if you look at the problem statement, uh, it's already given that you have to implement put where you have to put a key and not even uh, key and value. Both are integers. You have to implement get where you will pass a key and you have to check whether key is present or not. If key is present, return the corresponding value and then you have to implement remove. remove entry corresponding to a particular key so these three functions you have to implement so this is a much simpler version of uh, the uh, hash map now uh, while mapping certain values to certain index we will use a hash function so let's say we have a value called uh, 1005 and we are storing it mapping everything to range of 0 to 100 so what we can do simply take modulo 100 this is the simplest way of converting this to this range so what this this will be this will be 5 so this will be mapped to this index sixth value now if we have let's say 2005 and our hash function is same modulo 100 again we get a value of 5 
so two values are mapping to the same index and this is expected so in that case there are multiple ways of resolving this phenomenon this phenomenon is, is called collision and we have to do collision resolution so there are multiple ways of doing that one of the most popular is chaining so keep an array of some size you can start with some size and if you have more and more insertions you will see that it's getting crowded so you can create a bigger size so these are just uh, you can say uh, results of hash map uh, results of hash function uh, where you have some interval and actual data is just stored here in the form of linked list so this 1005 will be stored here data and the key and this 2005 and its corresponding data is stored next to it and let's say next value we store maps to index 10 so we will store it here and so on so when this chain grows we will uh, think of increasing the range so in this case insertion would be first step calculating this hash function o of 1 then we will come here and let's say we came here it did not match we go to next so it can be of the order of length of linked list length of chain so it's o of l so if we keep this l small then it will be considered o of 1 so this is how we find it same way we we have to insert it we come to 5 we see if it's next is empty or not it's not so we search for it if it's not there we insert it in the end if it's there we don't do anything and similarly for removal we have to perform the search and remove it so this is called chaining there is also another method called uh, uh, open addressing so there are different techniques there we will not go into detail of this and for this particular problem we will implement even simpler version of this so we are given that values all the keys and values are in the range of 0 to 10 raised to the power of 6 so what we can do we can take an array of size 10 raised to the power 6 plus 1 since the value can be up to this and can be 0 also so there are these number of unique values so 0 1 all the way up to 10 raised to the power 6 so whenever we have to get a value and let's initialize them to some negative values and these are positive values keys and values so all are minus one so when we are asked to get let's say 1000 we will come at this index 1000 we will see if it's minus one then uh, we will not return it or we can return minus one and if it's there we will return the value stored here similarly for put key and value we directly go to this index k and store the value and for remove we set this to minus one again so let's implement it in java python and c plus and i leave it up to you to implement this chaining method it should be straightforward for you so this outer thing is a vector of lists so these are all linked lists so vector of list of integers so you can implement it like this way so let's implement the simpler version first so we have to implement these three methods and there are some examples here so let's keep a container in this case vector or you can use array also and initialize it here
so the solution is accepted and it's o of 1 in true sense because we are exactly this will exactly tell take o of 1 time same way you can do it in java and python and the java solution is also accepted finally we will do it in python 3 and we got a wrong answer for python so the mismatch is here in the get expected is minus one we got one okay so we have we should have written minus one here for removing and now the solution is accepted